This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are now two months into the 2024 MLB season, which means we've gotten a pretty good sample on all teams and all players, and we can kind of tell what they're going to be from this point on. And I think it's a good time to dive back into the futures market, something we have not discussed since, I think, pretty early on in March. So what we're going to do today is take a look at the futures market of FanDuel Sportsbook, outline where I see value. Uh, we got a playoff bet in there. We got an, a, a Cy Young bet, a, an MVP bet. Outline my favorite bets of FanDuel Sportsbook for the futures market, and then dive into NASCAR and Gateway for this weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Here to dive into the MLB futures market of FanDuel Sportsbook and let you know my top bets is where things currently stand in that arena. We'll dive into all that here in just one second, but first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast if you want some thoughts on tonight's nba and nhl playoff games check out yesterday's show with tom vecchio we talked about both those on the show there with tom talked about top props for wolves and mavs and then for the Rangers and Panthers as well. Find that in your Covering the Spread podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcast, you can also find each and every show on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. The NBA Finals are almost here, but it's not too late to get in on the action with FanDuel because right now new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning five... i got to sneeze. Sorry. Push that one back. With any winning $5 bet, that's $150 used on sin game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. The seats is now stuck in my nose. This feels great. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expires seven days after receipt. Not available in North Carolina. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit MD Gambling Health Oregon, Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's dig in now to the futures market of FanDuel Sports. We're going to outline my favorite bets of where things currently stand. We're going to start things off here by talking about a playoff market and a team that has looked pretty good so far this year. Might not win their division, but I think it's undervalued to make the playoffs overall. That team is the San Diego Padres to make the National League playoffs. They are currently minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook, and I think that's a good window at which to buy them. Probably not going to chase down the Dodgers. We know that. Um, They're not juggernauts right now, the Dodgers, but they're probably going to win this division. But the Padres are still in a very good spot overall, and their advanced numbers so far are very good. And they are currently in the playoffs they have a half game lead over uh, the Cubs and the Cardinals in the wild card race, tied at the Giants in that second wild card spot. But they're a team that is playing very well. They're excelling in every key area except for defensively. They have a 114 WRC plus in their current active roster. Their starters have a 3.62 skill interactive ERA, and their relievers are a 3.34. So above average numbers in all three of those categories. Manny Machado is starting to look a bit healthier. Jay Cronenworth has made some gains over the offseason, and those seem pretty sticky, I think. And having Matt Waldron suddenly become, I don't want to say an ace, but like a good pitcher as your fifth starter is a nice lift for a team that I had pretty big concerns about the rotation entering this year. Fangrass has the Padres playoff odds at 59%. The implied odds at minus 115 are 53.5%. So 
a good gap there. And I lean more towards the fan grass side of things based on the data I was just discussing when it comes to what they've done so far this year. So the Padres minus 115 to make the playoffs. I think that's a pretty good number. You know, they're not going to win the division, but still in a good spot overall. And I think they've got the strength to emerge in the NL wildcard discussion. So give me the Padres minus 115 to make the playoffs in the NL for this year. I was careful when discussing the Padres not to speak too ill of the Dodgers because our other two futures bets revolve around the Dodgers. Not taking the World Series odds because those are aggressively short. They are at plus 260 right now there. But there are a couple of divisional markets where the Dodgers, to me, do make a lot of sense. The first one is the National League Cy Young race, or the National League MVP race, where Shohei Otani is plus 480, following Mookie Betts at plus 125. It's probably going to wind up being a race between those two guys. I think that Otani is undervalued. Now, this is tough because to win an MVP award as a DH only is difficult. Defense matters a lot. He he has to top his own teammate who has a lot of versatility on defense this year, is contributing in very fun ways, uh, has been an amazing teammate. I think that should count towards an MVP award. But Otani is playing so, so well right now. His expected Woba is 457. That is up from 427 last year and 383 the year before that. It is absurd what Otani is doing in terms of the expected Woba, but that also does not account for the fact that he has 13 stolen bases this year too. So he's not adding defensively, but he's adding both with his stick and on the base pass. As for Mookie Betts, his expected Woba is 397. So from a an offensive numbers-based perspective, we should expect Otani to outperform Betts down the stretch. It's just a question of whether that'll be enough to overcome the lack of contributions on defense. If you look at Fangraph's war, it's a number that factors in defensive contributions, factors in positional replacement, stuff like that, and includes a massive penalty for a player being a DH. But Otani still ranks second in war in the National League behind just Betts. And he's only 0.4 wins behind Mookie right now. I think that Otani can keep this pace up, and if he does... He's going to push bets all year long. Also, maybe lower injury risk for Otani being just a DH, whereas Betts is playing the the out or playing the infield as well. So taking Otani at plus four eighty now is pretty enticing to me. I think there's value there. I think it'll be primarily these two guys, but duking it out. And I get to bet on the best baseball player of all time, so I'm okay doing that. So we'll take Otani to win National League MVP at plus four eighty. Mentioned that there was a second Dodgers base prop as well, or second Dodgers base future. That's going to be Tyler Glasnow to win the Cy Young. Right now, Glasnow at FanDuel Sportsbook is plus 850 to win the NL Cy Young. I don't think, oh, we just shorted to plus 750 uh, since we were talking. So maybe not as much value there on Glasnow at that point, but I like the overall setup for him, given that he's trying to chase down Zach Wheeler and Chris Sale. I think that Glass now can do that. And obviously, people have a similar thought if they're betting down plus 850 to plus 750. But let's outline the case for Glass now here. He has a 3.04 ERA this year, so good results. But his skill interactive ERA is 2.71, and his expected ERA is 2.40. So his peripherals are even better than when the results have been thus far. The strikeouts for Glass now may come down based on his swinging strike rate, not getting as many whiffs as he would like, but his other numbers are really good as well. He has let up just a 6.5% barrel rate this year, which is exceptional for a player who gets as many strikeouts as he does. Now, the results for Glass now have not been as great recently, where he's let up a couple runs. Uh, the VLO is still good, not quite as good as it was early on, and that's concerning, given it's a, it's a guy with Glass now's injury history. But we do see things like that, uh, short blips in velocity for pitchers at times, and it's very possible that's what this is. But Glass now pitches for the best team in the sport. He's a clear ace on that staff, and his peripherals are better than his results right now. I also like that he doesn't have to overcome Tarek Skubal, because that would be frightening. Skubal's been a monster. So I think the plus, 850, or plus 750 is is long enough to alleviate some concerns around the slight dip in results and velocity recently. So yes, it is shortened. Yes, that is annoying uh, to have that happen in the 30 minutes between uh, looking at this and when I'm recording, but I do still think there is some value in glass now plus 750. 
So futures I am eyeing right now at FanDuel Sportsbook are the Padres to make the playoffs at minus 115, Shohei Otani to win NL MVP at plus 480, and Tyler Glass now to win the NL Cy Young plus 750 at FanDuel Sportsbook as of right now. Did want to also talk NASCAR for today because they're out in Gateway this weekend. Uh, Cup Series and Truck Series are in Gateway. The Xfinity Series out in Portland at a road course. Should be a pretty fun race there. Today we're going to focus on the Cup Series and... Similar to last week, most of the value lies in the top 10 mark. And that could be kind of scary because top 10s were not kind to me last week, was kind of leaning on some chaos in that Charlotte race, and it didn't run long enough for the chaos to transpire. I got a lower volatility rating for this track, uh, given it's a flatter track than we had for Charlotte, so not as dependent on volatility to come through here. But there are four different top 10 markets where I see value at FanDuel Sportsbook in this race. Let's start things off here with the one that is the shortest odds. That is Noah Gregson. He is 3-1 to one to finish inside the top 10 at FanDuel Sportsbook for this race. And I think that's a pretty good number on a guy who's looked good the entire year. I've got Gregson 32% for a top 10. His implied odds are 25%. Overall, Gregson's been very good this year. He has been at his best in this rules package. He finished sixth in Vegas, sixth in Dover, ninth in Kansas, 14th in Darlington. And those are all using the same rules package as will be in place this weekend at Gateway. Gateway is a flat track, though. So even though Phoenix is not in the same rules package, I do put Phoenix into the model because I do think that it is a skill to run on a, a flatter surface. And Gregson finished 12th there. Uh, so a different package, but a more similar track. So. We've seen Gregson have consistent success on this track type and in this rules package. It's not a huge surprise given that he did well in Xfinity as well. So with Gregson, last year was a struggle. It was really bad and he deserved to get fired. But I'm going to throw that out for him entirely based on what he's done here. So I think three to one is too generous for a guy to just get a top 10. So Noah Gregson, three to one, the first place I am turning. The second top 10 I, I like is on Daniel Suarez, currently 5-1 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I'm guessing Suarez is here because he's been really slow throughout the spring. And he said so. He had to send out like an apology video to his fans saying, hey, sorry, I suck right now, which is not a great sign for betting a top 10 market. But Suarez also said in an interview that they were trying things out. He is qualified for the playoffs already via his win in Atlanta, whereas his teammate Ross Chastain is, or is not. So Suarez is trying to find his way into the they're trying to find something that can help him in the playoffs. And he admitted that they are experimenting. Those experiments did not work. And he said, Hey guys, I can't do this anymore. Please take the take take me out of test mode effectively. And they have stopped doing that. It didn't initially turn things around right away for Suarez because he was struggling the first couple of races where they reverted those changes back. But last week in Charlotte, Suarez was very good. I thought that was pretty encouraging. He also finished seventh here last year. He had a seventh place average running position. He also tends to run pretty well in Phoenix. So I'm willing to overlook the recent lack of speed for Suarez given they've been experimenting for the playoffs. So Suarez, 21% finished top 10 for me. He is at 17% implied. Big enough edge for me to go there and buy low on Suarez, a guy who has been experimenting of late. The biggest top 10 value for me at FanDuel Sportsbook right now is on Michael McDowell to finish inside the top 10. He is 19% for me versus just 13% implied. And McDowell is similar to Suarez where in Gregson, where he tends to run well on either flat tracks or tracks in this package. He finished eighth in Phoenix, a flatter track using a different package, but 10th in Kansas, 10th in Darlington. So good form for McDowell on what we deem the relevant tracks. He also finished ninth here last year. And back in 2022, he had an 11th place average running position at this track. So you put that which is overall good form on this track and put it into a car that has been a lot faster this year, a tier one Ford organization. And it's probably going to lead to a decent amount of speed. So McDowell, my biggest value to finish inside the top 10 for this week at FanDuel Sportsbook was as long as eight to one yesterday, shortened to plus 650. I think that movement is justified and still not enough to bridge the value gap. So I'll take McDowell to finish inside the top 10 plus 650 at FanDuel Sportsbook for Gateway. The final top 10 where I see value is a long shot. And long shots are long shots for a reason, especially when it's to finish inside the top 10. But Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is an 8% finish top 10 for me versus 5% implied at 20 to 1. 
And I think the market is just way too low on Stenhouse right now. He was running really well here in this race last year, where Stenhouse actually finished sixth in the second stage. You don't see Stenhouse earn stage points very often, but he did here last year. He ran 219 laps, and he was in the top 15 for all but one of those laps. He then got caught up in a crash where Austin Sindrick uh, wrecked Austin Dillon. It was not of Stenhouse's own fault. Uh, he was on the outside, and they decided to have a peeing match inside of him, and it got Stenhouse caught up. Stenhouse has been better in this rules package this year than in the short track package. Had a good car in Texas, 15th place, average running position in Dover, despite some issues there. So I think that 20 to 1 is way too long. Now, again, I'm not even above 10% on him, so I'm also low on Stenhouse, but I think the market is lower than it should be as well. So we'll take Stenhouse 20 to 1 for a top 10 as the final top 10 this week. So the four top 10 bets I like at FanDuel Sportsbook Stenhouse top 10 at 20 to 1. Michael McDowell top 10 at plus 650, Daniel Suarez 5 to 1, and Noah Gregson top 10. That is 3 to 1 at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you're looking for an outright, I'm most high on Tyler Reddick relative to market. He's a 10 to 1 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I'd want that to be 12 to 1. That's where I bet that earlier on this week. So if you see Reddick slip to 10 or slip to 12, you see Martin Truex Jr. get to probably 10 is where I'd want him to be before I bid on him. Maybe nine, 950, somewhere in that range. If they lengthen a bit, I'd buy into those guys. But uh, I think the true value for this week lies in the top tens we discussed earlier on. That's all that we have here for today on covering the spread. Again, don't forget to check out the NBA NHL podcast with Tom Vecchio from yesterday to get some thoughts on uh, this weekend or tonight's games in the NBA and NHL. Also tomorrow, breaking down UFC pay-per-view with Austin Swain. He'll swing by, break down his top bets for UFC 303. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets and more. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk about the UFC pay-per-view. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> 